Hey, good morning everyone, Trackman44 here. Hey, I'm out in the uh, shop, just finishing up some uh, upgrades with the latches on the tailgate on my PJ trailer. And I decided that um, I was really getting tired of having to plug it in, you know, like a day before, or remember to plug it in, like a day or so before we get ready to use it. And so, you know, to get the battery charged up. So, last time I was down at PJ's, I went ahead and bought a, uh, bought a power miser. It's a 1.8 solar panel battery charger and maintainer. I think it, it says charger or maintainer. So that means if you've got a reasonably well charged battery that's low on charge, as in 10 and a half, 11 volts or something, I think it will charge it all the way up to the 12.6 volts at a full charge. But if it is at 12.6 full charge, it'll automatically go into a maintainer mode that'll just top off and kind of float on that charge. If it dips down, it'll just boost it back up and it'll just be on the battery continuously. And as long as it's got a continual sunlight available to the actual solar cell, it'll do exactly what it's supposed to do. Now, I didn't really, I forgot this, but um, a lot of cars had cigarette lighters that would stay hot all the time with the ignition off. Okay, if that's the case, if you have a, a car or something like that, you want to use a solar charger on to maintain your car battery, you can actually use this adapter right here and plug right straight into your battery charger and this thing will actually maintain your charge on your vehicle where it's a car or a truck. Now if it's one that cuts off when you turn the ignition off that's entirely different because you can't leave the key on in order to uh, to get that to work so you got to go directly to the battery. But anyway if in case you do go directly to the battery you can do like this right here it's got another option in the pack to where you just plug these guys on here and put the alligator clips right on the battery which is okay but they're going to be corrosion you know, they're going to be subjected to corrosion and all that kind of stuff and uh, you probably would want to opt to cut these guys off and put um, eyelets on if you actually have a pedestal that has a uh, like a 3 8 a 3 8 uh, bolt thread or nut or stud sticking out and you can put that little fitting right on it tighten it down with the nut and that would probably be the best so on this trailer I'm trying to locate the actual best place to protect this but let it get reasonably close to full access to the sun. The guy at PJ told me to set it up on top of the gooseneck, but to me that doesn't sound like it's a real good deal because when you're loading stuff, you know, sometimes you go over the top, uh, some things can fall right off of the bucket of your tractor or your forks or whatever and could possibly land on top of that gooseneck. It's happened before and maybe tear it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put it on the side of that gooseneck frame, kind of protected by the flanges of that I-beam on that gooseneck. So that's what the plan is. Then they give you these little suction cups here. There's four of them. I think uh, eventually two of them are going to work out and wear out on you. But uh, <laughs> I don't think it's real substantial either. You're supposed to plug these guys in here and that suction cup's going to hold it in place. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and drill and run sheet metal screws right into that I-beam or tap it and run some, um, oh, maybe some uh, number 10 machine screws in to hold this in place. Or I may just go quarter 20, I don't know. Depends on what the size of these holes are. They look like quarter inch. But I'm going to put some brass uh, brass bolts through there. And then I'll drill holes and run this right down into the battery compartment. Cut these alligator clips off of the end. And I'm going to go ahead and put ring terminals right on, uh, on the ends of these. So that's what we're going to be doing. So, um, oh hey, you got a real neat instruction booklet that comes with it too. And these guys have, this is the smallest one, a 1.8 watt. They have a 1.8, 3.3. 3.5, 7.5, 10 watt, and 20 watt solar cell that they have actually available through these guys right here. Power Wiser. Oh, hey, this ain't no paid promotion, you know. I, I probably shouldn't be doing this uh, until I'm sure that it's going to work fine, but I have a little bit of confidence in it. These guys sell a lot of these down there. They have two versions that they sell, and this is the, uh, the upgraded or the better of the two versions, so I went ahead and bought that. So uh, at any rate, it was a little pricey. Might be able to get them a little bit cheaper online. 105 bucks right here, full retail, you know, but they got to make money, you know what the heck. It's only a couple bucks, you know. I think I'm going to have them line my coffin with uh, with old tractor parts or something, you know what I mean? I don't need to have that cash to line it with. Hey, let's go on out there and take a look, see uh, see where I'm at, what I'm doing. You can see my concern immediately if you go ahead and place this thing up on top. The flange isn't even wide enough to totally protect it. There's a three quarters of an inch here, three quarters of an inch there, or three eighths on both sides still. It's a recipe bar disaster as far as I'm concerned. So it's going to go right in here. I've got the first hole drilled, got the second hole marked. Go ahead and drill the pilot hole. So 
see the red light, that's indicating it's actually charging right now, even though it doesn't have any connection. It's uh, generating electricity. If I feel a need, I can always put a piece of plexiglass right over the front of this to, uh, to kind of protect it. I uh, don't think we're going to need it, but uh, always have that option. Next thing I think I'm going to use a unibit and drill me a hole right through there. This does not unplug, so I'm going to have to drill a hole big enough for this here to go all the way through this right here. And I need to go through up here, not on this flange or below this flange, because that could get rubbed off in brush when you're going through the woods. So I'm going to drill right through here. It's going to take a half inch hole. Holy cow. There we go. Now I'm going to have to go get a plastic or a rubber strain relief for that. Excellent. Now we've got a uh, about an inch and a half space over here on this angle uh, that I'll be able to put this put it in. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a different kind of a strain relief. I'm going to use this dial right here which will, uh, by the time you squeeze it in there and tighten it in, it'll be just about waterproof. Now, when I was working commercially before I retired, and I'd be working on uh, control boxes, electric panels and stuff, anytime you're drilling, you want to do whatever you can to make sure you keep those uh, shavings out of the electrical gear, especially when you got circuit boards and everything, because those shavings can make contacts on circuit boards. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stretch my rags down here across the hydraulic stuff simply because you don't want shavings in your hydraulic or around your hydraulics either. So get those on there and then also what I'd always do in an electric panel is I'd prop a magnet of some sort like this guy right here to catch a good percentage of the shavings before whatever enter down in through the compartment. I gotta go ahead and drill this hole here. All you're gonna see is my shoulder so I'm just gonna turn the camera off. That's what my magnet kept out of the hydraulic area. There's about one-tenth of that amount that's caught by the rag sitting right on top of the hydraulic pump and the hydraulic reservoir. Well, if you ever get a chance to buy a set of these uh, sometime at a yard sale or a farm auction, these guys have four different sizes of, uh, of all the large mid-sized to large connectors like these guys right here. You have to go to this size right here to get the diameter of the, the holes big enough to go over the studs that are on the battery. But these guys are great. Pull this pin out, unthread it, and flip it around to the appropriate size that'll fit in there and give her the dickens. So here I am, down here inside the, uh, I've got my regular battery post and you've got these extra auxiliary posts right here, which happens to be like a 14 millimeter or 9 16 will work. And we're gonna go ahead and put these guys on here. The red are the striped, the, tr the wire with the tracer on it goes to the positive. So I went ahead and put a red one for the positive, blue because I didn't have a black or another color for the, uh, for the negative. So those are gonna go right onto there, plug right into here. And we're going to go ahead and check voltage. So when it's generating electricity without it connected to a battery, you can see it's going to have the red LED showing. So we're going to go ahead and plug this onto the battery right now. And the battery has a partial charge. I'm going to get the uh, voltmeter and check, see what the charge is. Now a fully charged 12 volt battery is going to read 12.6 volts DC. This guy's showing 12 volts, so it is definitely undercharged. A battery at 12.2 volts is about 50% charged, so it's definitely undercharged. And it's got an automatic battery tester inside here and it definitely shows between fair and poor as far as battery uh, battery voltage is concerned. So now we're going to go ahead and hook up that little uh, charger and we're going to read those again. See if the output changes. And I really don't know, it may have to uh, slowly charge over time for us to get a higher output, I don't know. Uh, looky there, it should turn green as long as it's connected to a battery that's taking voltage. There we are. Hey. I can see my reflection in the uh, solar cell. <laughs> That's kind of funny. So the last thing I got to do is I got to get some of those uh, sticky back little squares that you can actually um, attach little zip tie holders and then tie this guy up here where it'll be completely out of the way. And I'll put a couple more inside the compartment to keep these out of the way of the normal stuff that's going on inside there. Well guys, I don't know how well this is going to turn out. That wind is just blowing ridiculous crazy out there. I tried not to talk too often much while I was doing that little job. But uh, now you can see it from start to finish, how I just put that, that electric uh, charger, that maintainer on there, uh, solar powered, of course. And uh, yeah, I, I'm, I think it's going to be real good. Because like I say, it just jumped right up 13 volts. They're definitely output and it's charging the battery right now. And the battery has got a, um, a built-in charger where you can run an extension cord out and plug into it. And then there's a push button where you can actually check the condition of the battery. It's got the different uh, like yellow lights, 
uh, or green lights or whatever, you know, telling you what condition it is, and it's got like a poor, fair, good, and so at any rate, it was between poor and fair, I think it was, or between fair and good at 12, I think it was between fair and good at 12 volts, but right now, the charger is inputting 13 volts, so uh, in just a few hours, I would think uh, it should be up to a full charge on the battery. Like I said, a 12 volt battery at like 12.2 volts is about 50% of its actual capacity, believe it or not. That's what people mess up with on those uh, electronic ignitions. You, uh, you, you're just fooling yourself if you have a very weak battery and it's cold weather and you're trying to get that electronic ignition to fire. Those electronic ignitions typically need a full 12.6 in order to fire reliably and concisely and correctly all the time. So at any rate, that's neither here nor there. That's another entirely different story. That's all there is to this one here. I'm tickled to death with the tailgate repair uh, to those latches and everything to hold the tailgates in position. I'm tickled to death with those, and uh, I've been really looking forward to getting this solar charger on because it is really a pain to try to remember a day or two before you're going to use the trailer because you never know. You get a phone call, you're ready. You, you got to be ready to go with this solar charger. That's going to be the case, I hope. And I got it protected on the side of that I beam instead of laying down flat on top. I don't think that would last any time at all. And especially the way the directions say, use those two little suction cups through those mounting holes to hold that in place. Why those things would dry out and that thing would just catch the wind, they'd just blow off in no time, there ain't no doubt. And there you are, you're out a hundred bucks, you know. I think bolted on that vertical side of those I beams on the gooseneck is the way to go because it's reasonably protected and it's not gonna get knocked off. And uh, you don't have to rely on those silly suction cups. Those quarter 20 bolts in there with lock washers is gonna hold that in there. Uh, pretty securely and for a long time. So you know what? That's the end of this one here and this Tractor Man 44. I'm out of here, man.